Let's consider a few linear combination examples. These examples will be very simple, but they're meant to illustrate larger points. The first important point is that the concept of linear combinations applies to very different kinds of objects. So we'll start with geometric vectors, then we'll move on to polynomials, and finally to vectors in Rn, more specifically vectors in R3. Another important point that will be illustrated is that linear combination, and maybe the subject of linear algebra, is very simple. After all, the only two operations that are allowed is addition and multiplication by a number. So how complicated can things really be? And the final important point is to treat all objects on their own terms. So when we're dealing with geometric vectors, we'll talk about lengths and angles. When we talk about polynomials, we'll treat them as functions. And when we talk about vectors from Rn, we'll talk about their entries. So this will give you an opportunity to ask you a few intriguing questions. And finally, an opportunity to practice what we've learned with a few examples and a few exercises. The linear combination common to all the examples will be 2a minus 3b. Let's start with geometric vectors. Let's look at a short demo that I prepared for you in MATLAB. So here are vectors a and b. Once again, our goal is to evaluate 2a minus 3b. And a is a vector of length 3 quarters. b is a vector of length 1. The angle between them is pi over 3. And please note that I didn't draw any coordinate systems because using a Cartesian coordinate system is something that I'm very much against and I'm encouraging you to break that association between geometric vectors and their components. In fact, I will never mention components of these vectors in the course of this discussion. So our goal is to evaluate 2a minus 3b. So let's take a look at 2a. Of course, it's this vector, twice as long as a, and points in the same direction. Its length is 1 half. Let's take a look at 3b. It's this vector. It's three times as long as b and points in the same direction, and its length is 3. So the vector 3b is twice as long as the vector 2a. That was by design. So now 2a minus 3b is very easy to visualize. It's the vector connecting the tip of 3b with the tip of 2a. And it would be more proper to have this vector starting at the origin. So the final answer, 2a minus 3b, is this vector. So because we're dealing with pictures, your answer could just simply be, it's this vector. But we have more information, so we can make our answer more specific. Because I made this angle pi over 3, this is really a part of a large equilateral triangle, with the length of whose side is 3. So this part of it can be viewed as just half of the equilateral triangle, right? Pi over 3 means 60 degrees. This length is 3. This is 1 and a half. The length of 2a is 1 and a half. So this line right here is really the median or the bisector of that equilateral triangle. So this right here is actually the right angle. This angle is pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So we can say that the answer is a vector that's orthogonal to the vector a and whose length is 3 square root of 3 divided by 2 or square root of 27 divided by 2. And note, very importantly, our entire discussion was purely geometric. I never once referred to any of the components of these vectors. So I actually prepared a few exercises for you, and you can try them out on the lemma system, which I'll say more about a little bit later. Okay, now let's move on to our examples with polynomials. And the first thing to note is just how different polynomials are from geometric vectors. Geometric vectors are all about pictures, Polynomials are mathematical expressions, so they have something in common, the ability to be added and multiplied by numbers, but they're really as different as they could be from geometric vectors. So let's consider these two polynomials. We're after the same linear combination, 2a minus 3b. So let's first evaluate 2a and negative 3b. You can pause the video to make sure that those are correct. And here is 2a minus 3b. And once again, take a moment to make sure that this answer is correct. 
So we'll once again see that the concept of linear combinations can be applied to polynomials, and the result is another polynomial. Now it's time for my intriguing question. You will notice that the two original polynomials have the property that x, that x equals 2 is a solution. In other words, when evaluated at x equals 2, the result is 0. It's true for this polynomial, and it's true for this polynomial as well. So both of these polynomials have this property. And you will notice that all of the other polynomials have the same property. So my question is, is this just a coincidence? Or is this property preserved by all possible linear combinations? In other words, if two polynomials have this property, then any linear combination of those polynomials would also have the same property. And when you answer that question, the follow-up question will be the property f of 2 equals 1. So it's a slightly different property. Is this property preserved by linear combinations? Is it true that if two polynomials evaluate to 1 at x equals 2, that any linear combination of those polynomials will have the same property, that evaluated at 2, the result is 1? This is a very important question. Or more accurately, it's a very important kind of question to think about. Now, on the lemma system, I will ask you to answer yes or no to this question, but also provide a free-form explanation for your answer. That's particularly interesting to me. All right, now let's move on to Rn. In Rn, let's consider these two vectors. Again, we're after the same linear combination. So the vector 2a and 3b are seen right here. And the linear combination 2a minus 3b is here, 8 minus 8, 0. OK, again, take a moment to make sure that the numbers are correct. That's not the important thing here. The important thing is to note that a linear combination of two vectors in Rn is another linear combination, and that the concept of linear combinations continues to apply just as well as it did for polynomials and geometric vectors. So let me ask you once again, an intriguing question. You will notice that these two vectors, if we label them generically x1, x2, x3, have the property that the last component, x3, equals 0. Is this the kind of property preserved by linear combinations? In other words, if two vectors have this property, does any linear combination of those vectors have the same property? And then the follow-up question is this. Consider the property that the third component, excuse me, that the third entry equals 1. Is that property preserved by linear combinations? Very important type of question to learn to answer. OK, and just to belabor this point a little bit more, let's consider one final example. And we'll go through it relatively quickly. Consider these two vectors. And let's go straight to the linear combination, 2a minus 3b. And it equals this. And you can verify that the numbers are correct on your own. But now I just want to ask my question. You will notice that these polynomials share the property that the first entry is the same as the last entry. And the linear combination has the same property. Now, is this the kind of property, x1 equals negative x3, that's preserved by linear combinations? And once you answer that question and give me a verbal explanation for why you think that's true, you can consider this follow-up question of the first entry is 1 greater than minus the last entry. So if you go to the lemma system, you will see that you're invited to answer yes or no to each one of these questions. But also there will be a free form entry box where you can put in your explanation. And I'm particularly interested in reading those.